and welcome back to Napoleon Total War with a Pike and Shot mod. It's the Thirty Years' War and we are playing as the Emperor, the Habsburgs. So, since last time around, the Brandenburg have joined in with the Swedish allies and declared war on us, and so I've moved my two main forces into position to attack them. We've got Wallenstein on the left, and on the right we've got Tilly ready to march on the Brandenburgers. They are holding two forces here at the bridges, and then a main force behind in, Ber uh, in Berlin ready to reinforce these. So the idea here is, well first of all, it is a victory object, which I actually have two twice for some reason. But that'll fine because we'll get a lot of uh, troops out of that if we get both of these. Could be a bug and could crash. There's gonna be, there have been a lot of crashes because it's quite an unstable mod. So if you notice discrepancies in between episodes that I've not mentioned, it's probably due to a crash um, that I'm trying to find a workaround to. So, yes, we're going to move at Brandenburg. After that, we're going to split the two forces, one of which is going to go over to Mecklenburg, which is another target um, there, as uh, we get troops from that, which would be very nice. And then the second army will head off to Swedish Pomerania, which is currently under rebel control. And then we'll continue on until Western Prussia and go against the Swedes there. The um, important bit here is to try and support a Pol Polish-Lithuanian allies by dealing damage to the Swedes. We'll probably might even send an army through Polish-Lithuanian territory to move in to actually aid against the Swedish forces, which seem to be rampaging through their country. The war there's a bit of a risk of them allied with the Ottomans being able to split the Polish-Lithuanian realm in two, which would not be nice. I just noticed that this has fallen to the Russians, which is good news, in a way, because it um, diminishes the power of the Swedes, but at the same time, not too pleased with the Russians coming forward. Um, there could be problem with the Ottomans. We are currently at peace with them. There are uh, quite a bit of forces building up over here. So it could be that we'll be coming under attack here. So I've moved Charles. I think in the last episode I had him up here against the Transylvanians, but I decided not to go against the Transylvanian force. So we moved back down here instead to protect the Balkans from a possible Ottoman invasion rather than go after these. The reason that I wouldn't wanted to go after these to begin with was because I thought the Polish Lithuanians might take him before I did. But the thing is, there's so much attrition moving through the heavy woods here that the only logical area to attack the Transylvanians is through here. So I don't think the Polish would be able to pull that off. Especially now since the main threat against the Polish is the Swedes. So that's what's going on there. In terms of what's going on in other areas, not really super much interesting. There was a second English Navy coming down and I thought it was going after us. However, they actually ended up laying, la laying landfall against the French and took this area that was rebelling in France. So that's kind of interesting. We've got the English back in France. Uh, we'll see how long they last there. And then finally, the force that we sent to take Sicily is now on its way to take Sardinia. So we got our main fleet here moving, ready to disembark these troops on Sardinia. We're also now building galleons, proper war galleons, similar to what the English sent against us. I remember in the last episode, I think it was when we sunk the British galleon, I was thinking of the Mary Rose when the ship was just called the Rose. And I think also the Mary Rose it was a bit of an older ship. Like a hundred years older or something like that. Because uh, they found longbows on it, right? Still possibly had cannons. 
I'm not sure. Because uh, that's why it sunk, right? It sunk the same way that the Vasa did. Where the lower gun ports were open and it sunk. Or something like that. I can't... I'm paraphrasing worse than the... Some kind of... Yeah, anyways. Um... Alright, so we're gonna go through there. But the main point is that we're gonna go against the Brandenburgers. We're gonna just... There was one move I wanted to make, and that is... We're sending even more merchant ships to uh, deal in sugar. The price differences on the different goods have changed quite a bit. I have been able to trade in ivory to the point where the price of ivory has now fallen almost to the level of sugar. I think this starts at like 65 or something in value. Now it's at uh, 48. Next up would be cotton. I think... I'm not sure where you can get cotton. I think actually you have cotton up here. Yeah, you have cotton that comes in from America. And then tobacco as well. Uh, furs from Boston. Tobacco from Baltimore. Tobacco from Norfolk, and cotton from Savannah, and then also cotton from St. Augustine, which I think is in um, in uh, Florida, possibly, or uh, there could be multiple, I don't know. Right, so we've got that under control. I'm also, yes, I'll, as the last bit of information here, as we're now moving to situate ourselves to fight in the north, we are uh, moving Pappenheimer, not Pappenheimer, yeah it is Pappenheimer, Pappenheimer is supposed to, he moved in here because of the possible attack against the Saxons, that didn't materialize, so now instead he's going to be shifted over to Silesia, we did have a, a Swedish attack on Silesia, so he's going to move as to there as his base, and then he's probably going to move through Polish territory, and see about finding a way to go get against the Swedes as these two armies will, of course, swing that way. We'll see how th it all pans out. This force is actually being sent down to Budapest because I did have, in between episodes, a small attack on Budapest by the Ottomans. We were able to hold them off with the troops that I had there. So that's okay, and that's also why I'm building a small star fort. And with that, I think we've explained everything from economics to military and so on. In terms of technology, we're slowly working our way through. And we have been able to uh, assess these, and we are building these all over the place. We're trying to get... Um, Milit Militar Grinse, which uh, will enable the next uh, magistrate building. Advanced reloading drill sounds nice. Um, upkeep cost, but we get markship, marks, marksmanship skills and so on. So we'll slowly work our way here, upgrading. Not all of these, as th as these kind of edicts and stuff, is more reflective of what sort of slowly rolled over time. Not all of these are actually great. Like normally also they, they kind of they're I think they're really interesting because normally in normal Napoleon and so on, you get like tiny increases of like two percent increase or like a you know, if you're lucky, really lucky you get five percent increase. Here you can get like really high ones. But also you get a lot of minus as well. Like this one here gives 10 minus happiness uh, for the lower classes and 50% religious unrest increasing that minus diplomatic relations but it increases wealth per region and generated by farms and so on so they're quite interesting and they're more reflective of the time more so than a direct improvement which I think is interesting uh, we've got Wallenstein right here which could have moved here but I don't have the moves to make that attack so I'm thinking we're going with Tilly. Now Tilly's army is weaker I would say than uh, Wallenstein so it would be a harder fight against the enemy. Now luckily for me they've got a lot of medium pikes what it looks like and 
like weaker cavalry so I think we have a better chance with the Dutch formations the Dutch formations are not that great as I've seen in other ba in other battles or especially if you compare to my Kaiser's uh, pike units like the heavy um, Kaiser uh, Kaiserlich Pekinia uh, units that I've brought in before um, but yeah, we're going to move and attack here. It's going to be a river crossing. We'll see how it goes. The Brandenburgers obviously will go ahead and uh, reinforce. And it'll be quite a battle. I One thing that I do think that happens is in terms of bringing in reinforcement on my own side. Um, larger ones. I think that causes uh, crashes. But we'll see. In terms of their force, they lack very much gunnery. Um, they have one musket unit. They have two dragoons, though, but that's not going to make up for it. They've got more cannons, but I think it's smaller cannons, right? It's the Shakers versus my 18-pounders. Not that I think cannons going to make the deciding factor. The deciding factor is going to be the gunnery. And if my pikes can hold away the enemy pikes. Now they have a lot of swordmen but as it's all kind of converged at one point where everyone will try to cross over um, and especially since I start my army on the map their army is going to come in as a reinforcement. I do say that I am um, sitting on a great chance here to take control of the crossing point before the enemy and uh, decisively set up a, the conditions for victory before they've even uh, materialized as a force on the field. With that said, let's go straight into battle, shall we? I've brought three of my cavalry units across the river. The rest of the troops have situated themselves in this nice half circle right at the crossing points. We've got two gunners in the front. We've got pikemen in the back. We've got the light swordmen right here. Cannons in the center. The enemy is not going to know what hit them as they try to cross. The Harkabaseers ready to shoot the one and only matchlock infantry unit that the enemy has. Right, hold and fire. We're gonna bring in the pistoliers to do some extra damage there as well. We're losing some harkabas here, but the harkabas ears can do an astonishing amount of damage as we can see how the unit evaporates however in a prolonged firefight the reload time of the Harkibus airs are gonna work against them so we are withdrawing pistol airs riding up actually it's better here if we crush the unit by sword Both cavalry units being drawn in, surrounding the enemy unit, and slowly working it down. Actually, the Hakkabasiers can come back then, because the gunners are gone, there's nothing really to threaten them. They can come back and start harassing some of the enemy units. 
The morale, of course, because of the difficulty level is really high. So even though I'd imagine this unit to be crushed a lot sooner, it actually holds on for quite a while here. Down to less than 40 men. Although, if you think about it realistically, what are these men going to do? They can't really very well run away in a situation like this, can they? When they're surrounded by cavalry. So the only musketry unit the enemy has besides the dragoons is now gone. Right, move back. Ready to fire pistol. Harkibus is doing tremendous damage to the enemy formations. I really need to recruit more of these because they're super accurate and they absolutely slaughter enemy formations when given the chance to fire like that. Pistolier Cavalry doing quite a bit of damage as well on their own but nowhere near what the Harkibusiers can do. So I'm free here, really, to c continue to harass these units as they make their way towards the crossing. And given the way the enemy is moving forward, they're kind of coming at us piecemeal. Which is going to make it super easy for me to destroy them. Okay, the Harkibus here is about to fire. Look at that! You'd think the unit was hit by canister shot. Given the amount of men that fell out of that unit. However, we will hold off with the rest of the cavalry attacks. As I'm thinking, for the final bit here, we'll attack this area right here. Oh, they're still bringing in units? I didn't realize. I thought they were finished a long time ago. Um... So I want to attack and kill off the cannons and there's also some provincial cavalry that's kind of hugging the uh, the ground there. We're going to bring our cavalry. Mm, I don't. I hate to run them through my own formation and destroy that right now. So we're going to take our provincial cavalry over to the bridge and cross there. Um, other than that, I'm thinking that we'll fast forward until these guys try to cross here and then as this area is uh, sufficiently reduced in infantry presence especially pike units the cavalry will make its advance and will send in the cavalry and crush them there the Harkibus here I mean the Harkibus here fire I'm kind of astonished the the amount of damage they are able to do Let's go ahead and see if we can't get another shot off at close range there before um, I go to set the uh, the crossing point. Right. The cavalry is setting up. The enemy unit is just about to come within range. I'm going to wait until they come a lot closer before we actually fire. Let's go ahead and speed this through a little bit. Okay, here. I think it might be that they are... Yeah, they're gonna fire on this unit, which is good. I mean, look at that. It was like it was a hit by a canister shot. Right, we're gonna withdraw the cavalry. We're gonna set them up over here. We're gonna see about run around and then crush this. At the same time as these guys are crossing. And the enemy finds itself now right in front of our cannons. So let's have the cannons start blasting the enemy as they uh, move through here. And so I've set up for the cavalry attack. We're going to have the Harkibusiers move through there while the Pistoliers move through here. The Provincial Light Cavalry will move to the side and uh, we'll try and go ahead and destroy this troop which has been left behind 
Well, as a roleplay, um, as part of the roleplay history, or story, probably a better word, um, we can say that they were bonked down, and they were left behind as the Brandenburgers rushed to control the river crossing. Unfortunately, it was at no use, and at the same time, our cavalry was able to cross at another spot and uh, gain the advantage by advancing on the enemy even before them. The heavier cavalry will hold fire. The Harkabasiers are holding from the frontal assault of the enemy's light cavalry. This unit should be brought up in a better way to come around the enemy force and then strike it in the back while my light cavalry is cutting up the cannons. The enemy has now been surrounded. Although it's not looking good for this unit, which is down quite a bit of soldiers. Although so is the enemy unit. Now down to 20 each. And the cannons being dispersed at the same time. Um, looks like the enemy now is uh, finally make their advance towards the crossing point. Just for the cavalry to be ready with... Oh, they've cut them down to the man. Not a single unit managed to get away. And that kind of goes for the cannons as well. The cavalry will reorganize, they're tired, so we'll let them sit here. They don't need to rush over there just yet, as uh, we'll have uh, to take plenty of time here to reduce this force as it's now trying to move across. Fire! Perfect targets for my cannons to bounce their shot through multiple lines of cavalry and infantry as they make their way across. I've specifically ordered the gunners to hold fire and so to fire as uh, the enemy gets closer. Let's just fire this side to start with. And it seems that uh, even if I did allow these guys to fire, they would not uh, be able to hit there anyways. Losing a few gunners in this line, but it's nothing really major, as it's about 25 men, and the enemy is in turn forced away back across the river with only eight men out of the this dragoon unit and 17 out of this one All right, cannons resume firing as it seems they're focusing on this side I will bring these gunners a little bit closer so that they can actually take part in the battle, so we can utilize the full firepower of all these units. And we might bring these units slightly closer as well. And then the pikes move closer. Alright, cannons. Ready to fire again, now it's the pikes that are coming across.
daunting task to march in tight formation straight against cannons as they rip through the lines. Not killing super many of them, but then again, I'm sure a lot of my cannon shots were soaked up by the river, stopped by the water. Right, we've got the worst intersection of gunfire right about here. I thought I'd told them to hold fire. Oh, no matter. Open fire. Fresh, 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 fresh. There's one there on the side that is tired. We'll have them slowly start to advance towards here right now. At a certain point here, the cannons should switch to canister. As the enemy gets closer. A little bit of a daunting task here is the fact that in terms of their morale, it's going to take a lot, a lot to actually break these. Oh, yeah, they will have to wait quite a bit until we are able to uh, use the canister. Form into squares. Keep getting those shots in. When it's time, we'll retreat the musketeers behind the pike formations. Looks like it's about time to switch the canister. Good canister shot right there. This side, it might be time to uh, actually retreat the gunner units now to behind cover, and same with this one. This one can hold its position. It's perfectly fine where it is. I think I want the cavalry now here rather quickly, actually. Especially the Harkabas ears. Right, we got good fields of fire everywhere. Ooh! General unit situated right in front of the cannon. They seem to be focusing in on this side. Count Tilly will with his bodyguard move to the side to support them continuously shots of canister is uh, ripping through the enemy's morale as well as their flesh looks like they possibly might be overpowering this square Troop after troop is now retreating. This one's uh, now out of range, it'll switch to round shot. My Dutch formations are holding. There's no problem whatsoever with the Dutch formations. A light cavalry will be sent after uh, the retreating troops. I want no one to leave alive. Right, most of the enemy are broken over here. So we'll order the gunners forward. Okay, this square will be supported. The 
focus should lie now on firing on these. I'll bring the gunners as close as I dare. These small units is actually kind of pointless chasing after. I should probably chase after these two right here. Drop your squares and move to the side there. Let's get the Archibus ears across. See if we can get them there, actually. Pistol ears will hold fire. There's a risk of friendly fire there. Lots of enemy units are falling. I'll order my general to move over to the side and pistol whip the last of these retreating fools over here. Brave soldiers still hold on. But for what use? We're gonna bounce some shots through that. Retreating troops. General, go ahead and shoot those down. I would say at this point, the battle certainly is won. There's only a slight holdout over here of enemy troops, but it'll be an entire crushing victory as we have slaughtered them to the man. No one almost, will leave alive.
the result of that, we deployed roughly the same amount of troops, a hundred man difference. Um, however, in terms of troops lost, there's quite a big difference where the enemy lost everything but 102 men compared to our losses, which numbered 394. So, uh, out of forces remaining, we still have 2,500 men to march on Berlin, while the enemy has 102 troops retreating back to defend it. Um, in terms of disparity in between our losses and what the enemy killed, there's about 80 man difference. So, 80 men that we killed ourselves. Highest amount of kills goes to the Harkabuseas, no surprise there, they're really accurate and they were able to gain two post-battle chevron experience points which is really good. Then the writers also up here, one of the match lock infantry units as well up here could be the one that stood the closest on the right because I think it's the one that took the most damage, it's most likely that one. Same with this Dutch pike formation. So really good battle where we absolutely wiped the field with a Protestant force. And we even gain a marker. I have not gained one of these in this campaign whatsoever, I think. Well, lay siege for now. Does this hold? This does not hold a castle, so we could run over the force immediately. I want to see what it's called. What is the battle called? Why does it just say trade route? There! Battle of Cottbus in August of 1623. Victory over Brandenburg, Prussia. What I think we'll do is we'll move up the second force so we can get an out, a quick out-resolve on this. Yeah, but given the time that I've spent on the episode right now, I think it's high time probably to end the episode right here. Oh, also, oh, if oh. in case this crashes, it will save me a lot of time to try and reorganize and fix this after the episode and try and like figure out what to do here. But that was really good, I think. And yes, for the next one, will continue on and I'll hopefully have set it up so I can advance on Mecklenburg which promises to be a harder fight given just what I can see of the troops they have here um, and then also if I may man maybe manage a second battle against set in Pomerania which would be a good fight as well not as good as the Mecklenburg one also Mecklenburg has a lot of wealth, I notice here. 18,000. That's a... Oh, Brandenburg is uh, going through bankruptcy. The area is completely... They haven't even been to war. They've been to war like two turns. And they completely, completely crumble. No wonder their force was absolutely, you know, smashed to pieces. They fought on bravely for a very long time, but... They don't have any money whatsoever. The wealth of the region is 3,000, and it's, it's Berlin we're talking about. Mecklenburg has 18,000. I mean, maybe at the time Berlin m might not have been much of a city, but I think the AI is mismanaging their economy quite a bit. Or it's just that I get, it's just me who gets this ridiculous bonus of growth. 400 uh, which seems to be the case because uh, Bavaria is gaining 2 Saxony is minus 2 Brandenburg who knows what they had before the siege probably not a lot um, it would be nice to see the other capitals of the world can I see the Spanish capital? No. Um, so yeah I think the uh, yeah it seems to be limited to me now of course this is rebel so minus 72 might not be that big of a surprise, but holy shit, everyone's economy is absolutely shit, except mine, which is off the bloody rails. But yeah, there we go, the Brandenburgers were defeated in the Battle of Cottbus, and um, 
for the next one. We hope for swift victories across Germany. With that said, I'll say as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye! Thank you.